Hey guys, Mal here, and today we're taking a look at base building on 1SK Gaming DayZ servers. Having a base in DayZ can be extremely helpful. For example, you can store your guns there rather than getting ripped off at the traders. So how does it all work? Alright, so there's two different ways to approach building your base on a 1SK gaming server. The first one is to build a full-blown standalone base. I'm talking foundations, walls, windows, doors, and roofing. The second option is to build bits and pieces to block off one of the prefab buildings. They both have their pros and cons. The first option means that you can hide your base in some obscure place or forest. It'll be far less likely to be found, and you can lay it out exactly how you want it. However, the build cost is going to be significantly higher due to all the extra parts. The second option on a 1SK gaming server is incredibly cheap, and it allows you to have more control over how they have to raid you, as it's built within a prefab building that they cannot destroy. The cons to this method is that your base will be found by a lot more people. This can lead to door campers, town campers, and getting raided. The choice is yours as to which way you want to do this. Personally, I'm a fan of prefab building, as I'm usually either solo or duo. Now it's important to remember that on the 1SK gaming servers, there's a rule that you can't build any closer than 1500 meters from a safe zone. Literally even a meter over that and the admins will destroy the entire base. So with all that in mind, let's take a look at how to build. Building in DayZ is done with kits. There are a number of them. Foundation, wall, window, door, roof, gate, floor, pillar, stairs, stair hatch, ladder hatch, and stick vents. Each of these kits creates one component. So for example, you need a door kit for each door in your base. Each of these kits requires planks and nails to craft, with the exception of the wood pillar kit, as it requires logs and nails. The doors are lockable with a code lock, and there's a snapping system when placing the kits that can be toggled by pressing B. Press F to cycle through the snap points, and K to focus on an object. Barbed wire, camo nets, and pillars can be added to certain parts. So hit one of the traders, which you can find by hitting M and turning the markers on for the traders. Buy a big bag from the clothing trader, if you're going to need it. Now hit the misc trader and grab an axe, a handsaw, a hammer, nails, a few rolls of duct tape, and code locks. An optional extra is a lock pick. Not an essential, but I like to have one on me for building. You can chop down the trees in the safe zone, so find a little forest patch and get to it. Chop the bigger and thicker trees down with an axe. The small ones will not give you logs, which is what you're after. Use the handsaw to craft planks. Cut down enough trees for four logs. Make planks, and then combine a stack of ten planks with the nails. Left click until you see the door kit, and then hold left click to craft it. It'll take about a minute or so to craft. Remember to pick it up afterwards. Now you should have about six planks left over. That's perfect. You'll need them for the door later. All right. So let's head out to where you want to build. I should mention it's worth scouting out the area first before you rock up with a big bag of expensive building supplies. Now, find a room or building that you can seal off with your door. If you brought a lockpick, then you can lock prefab doors to the building. That way you'll be less likely to get jumped while you are building. Get the door kit in your hands and left click to choose placement. You can rotate the blueprint with your scroll wheel on your mouse. It is extremely important that you place this the correct way. There is a soft side and a hard side. You want the side with the support beams towards you. Once you place it inside a doorway, you can test if you've placed it correctly. Stand on what you think is the soft side. Hit tab and look for the door kit's inventory. If you see it, you're all good. If you don't, go to the other side, dismantle it, and try again. Now here comes the scary part of your solo. You're gonna dump all the crap out of your bag onto the floor. Grab your axe, and as quickly as you can, leg it to some trees and get two logs. It's worth noting that you get a log from three hits on a tree. You don't have to cut it down. Fallen trees are a huge indicator that there's a base in the area and people scouting out raids will see it. If you didn't heed my advice and buy a really big bag earlier, then you'll have to slowly and individually carry the logs into your base. That's a great way to get shot. If you aren't solo, throw the ax to your mate and get them to get the logs. That way you can keep the building supplies safe. Once you're back inside with your two logs, attach them to the door kit. Grab your planks and nails and attach them too. Grab your hammer and get to work. You'll have four segments to build. Left pillar, door frame, door, and right pillar. After that, you just need to attach your code lock to the door and set a code. You now have a little safe space within Shinaris. Good job! 
If you'd like a little bit of storage to store some of your tools, you can make small boxes with some planks and nails. They're great for now, but you'll quickly outgrow them. Now let's take a look at how safe you actually are right now. One door takes either one sledgehammer or a hacksaw and possibly some duct tape. Either option will take about 30 minutes of standing there, holding left click, smashing the door or cutting the lock off it. Both the hacksaw and sledgehammer are rare. The sledge can be bought at the Spec Ops Trader for 25,000 rubles. That's how safe you are, one sledgehammer or hacksaw. So how do you fix this? Well, you add more layers. Look at the building you're making a base in. Keep in mind that people can't get through the prefab building itself for the most part. Use key choke points such as stairwells to hit them with a bunch of doors. Every layer you force them to go through is another expensive and rare tool and half an hour of their time. Alternatively, you can look at using gates. Now gates have their pros and cons too. The pro is that the gate requires two sledgehammers to get through, one for the panelling and then one for the frame. They aren't any stronger when it comes to hacksaws as that attacks the code lock. The downside is that they can be a pain in the ass in a small house base and they try and throw you down the stairs pretty often. It's up to you which you'd prefer to use and how you'd like to lay out your base. Personally, I add as many layers as I can manage. My current base is a three hour raid, however I'm almost ready to up that to nine hours. You gotta be dedicated to do a nine hour raid, especially when you get barely anything until the final room. Honestly, it's not even slightly worth raiding for what we have in there compared to the cost of raiding it. The final lesson for today is that you should always block up your windows. Whether you use a wall or a window kit, whichever you prefer, just get them blocked up. There are some very creative ways to glitch through windows in DayZ, and once they're in they can dismantle everything from the inside out. Also to dismantle crates, lockers and storage boxes, you need a screwdriver. So don't leave them lying around for people to use if they're raiding you, keep them somewhere safe. So now you have the fundamentals of base building on the 1SK Gaming Daisy servers. Decide from here what you want to do, how safe you want to be, and all that good stuff. Good luck with the base building, and I am so sorry if I raid you. If you found this guide helpful, it'd be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up, and if you're new around here, why not sub so you get more helpful guides. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.